Hi, I'm Antonio Centeno. I'm the founder of Real Men Real Style. Today, gentlemen, I'm bringing you three tips on how to buy a quality necktie. Three tips on what to look for when you're out there and you're making a purchasing decision, wanting to get a nice tie as a gift for yourself. And you want to make sure is this made from quality material? How is this constructed? Am I going to be taken care of after I make the purchase? Guys, I'm going to address three tips in a lot of detail. This is brought to you though by the dark knot. Now, throughout this, I'm going to be talking about quality neckties. The dark knot is, and they do make quality neckties. The founder Rishi reached out to me. I've got the ties in here. And in fact, as I'm going through, I'm going to be using these as an example because they passed my exam. They did a great job. One of the things I really like about the dark knot is the presentation. It's holiday time. I know you guys have got to be out there buying gifts. This is going to make a great gift. One of the things I love about the presentation is the way the box opens, but within it, there are some pretty cool things besides the type. Amazing quality, but I'll get to that in part three. So, let's get into it. Tip number one. What's the first thing you want to look for in a quality tie? The material. Now, most ties out there are made of silk, and that's what I'm going to be talking about mostly today. Now, I know some of you guys are talking about, hey, what about woolen ties? What about polyester ties? What about all those other things? Now, nah, that, that's possibly another subject. I would rather focus in on silk, which is 95, probably even more than that, 98% of the market. So, silk. Oftentimes, we think of it as a luxury fabric, and it is. It's a protein-based uh, fiber. It uh, comes from a type of worm uh, when it's cocooning to go to a moth, and it has been produced in China. In fact, China is still the number one manufacturer of quality silk in the world. It used to be if you, know, you tried to export those secrets, you were put to death. Uh, since now, it's, we see it coming out of Thailand, uh, India as well. Even the United States has some silk production, but the best in the world is still, in my opinion, coming out of China. Now, what makes silk so valuable? Why would you want quality silk? And there are different levels of silk, different types of silk. What you want to be looking for is silk that is going to be durable and have a bit of elasticity. It doesn't have to have a whole lot of elasticity, but it should have very high tensile strength. We're going to get to a test at the end of this where I kind of show you how to find that, but it's that tensile strength, it's that bit of elasticity which allows the tie. I mean, think about what you do with the tie. You're tying it into this knot, a very tight knot, and you're doing this hundreds of times over the tie's life, and you want it to go back to its original shape. So, that is one of the reasons you want good quality silk. Now, you're not going to be able to probably go back to the manufacturer, but there are things that you can look at in a quality tie. You want to look at the drape. How does it hang? Hold it in your hand and look. I get a nice drape here. Okay, it passed that next part. They should not attract dirt. So, that's one nice thing about silk is because of the way that the silk uh, individual fibers are shaped, they actually have a triangle type of shape, uh, a pyramid. And that's why they have the reflective surface. But what's also really cool about that is dirt. It gets very hard for it to stick into it. Now, one of the things that you probably know, and I'm going to get into some of the negatives about silk, is it actually loses about 20 to 25 percent of its strength when it's put into water. Uh, it also can change shape based off of heat. Like any protein-based uh, fiber, it, will, it can denature. So, don't expose it to too much heat. You never want to iron a uh, you can expose it to, and I've seen some people be pretty smart about how to get these back in shape, and that's probably for a whole nother video. Uh, you have to be very careful with that. I like to just lay them flat and let them press back into shape, maybe put it between two books. But let's not use heat or anything like that because protein-based fibers can, again, denature and can permanently damage and you're going to have to throw it out. That's another problem with keeping them clean. If you get a stain on them, you want to treat it immediately and you want to make sure because you don't just throw this into your washing machine. You're going to have to be very careful with, uh, with silk. But again, it's something that overall the reason and the durability is more about the fact that you can stretch this, it will go back to its original shape. You can tie a knot and be pretty rough in and around this area, and it will continue to not fall apart on you. So, we've talked about material. Let's go in to construction. So, construction is really, and to be honest with the material, it's going to be hard to tell the different variances unless you get down and you do a textile test, maybe it Texas Tech's Textiles Testing Center. Yeah, it's a lot of words there. But, you know, you could send it in there and ask for, you know, a little bit more detail about the silk. But it's going to be actually a point too, the construction that you're able to really see, okay, 
did this company pay attention to the details? Like in a finely made shirt, if you look on the inside of the shirt and you look at the stitching, you'll be able to tell, okay, I can't, I don't maybe know exactly where this cotton came from, but I can figure out, did they pay attention to the details? Are the buttons nice? And if they did that, then most likely they used a good fabric. And that's the same thing you're gonna do with a tie. So let's go ahead and talk about the inner lining. So this is something you don't normally see. You're gonna to have to actually look inside here, but on the inside, and you may not be able to see it, but on high quality ties, they're going to use wool. Some of them are also going to use cotton. I know the Dark Knot, he uses both a wool and a cotton to give it a little bit more substantial of a feel because his whole thing was he wanted to have a really nice knot. So if the tie feels really, really light or it feels really flimsy, that's a bad indicator. The wool, what's gonna be great about that, it's going to last a long time. Again, that's gonna be able to return to its original shape, uh, but again, it can be affected by heat. Uh, again, another protein-based uh, fiber but it's the inner lining you want to look for. Do they reveal what they use on the inner lining of the tie? Wool is where, where it's at. Now let's look at the slip stitch. So the slip stitch in the back of the tie, and you can't always see, you're gonna to have to open it up just a bit. It should be relatively loose. And what this does is it allows the tie to shift. So any of you engineers out there, you know the best buildings that are earthquake resistant, they have a little, they can, they can basically move a bit with the earthquake. Because if you stay too rigid, what's gonna happen? The whole building's gonna fall down. The same thing with the tie. You wanna have it so it can move about around a bit because you're contorting it, you're putting it into all these different shapes. So that is really important. Look at the slips, uh, the slip stitch. Make sure that it's a bit loose and that, uh, yeah, it's not too tight in there. And that has to be done oftentimes by, uh, well, it, it takes time to do it right. Now let's talk about the bar tack. So again, we're gonna get to the back of the necktie and we're gonna see usually a piece of a fabric or a piece of thread that's gonna hold the tie together. This is important, the bar tack, it is a reinforcement. And again, it's an indicator. Many cheap ties, they skip this. And that's why if it's gone, you can bet they probably skipped it when it comes to the fabric and the material they used. Now let's talk about the keeper. So in the back of the tie, this is, we're all familiar with this. This is where you tuck the, uh, the tail right into. Now the keeper, you wanna look at how is it attached? How is it constructed? Do they do a good job? I really like companies that have basically two keepers. One, they use a label and then they use actually not. A lot of companies just try to get, get away with using their, their brand label and that's fine if it's well stitched on, but you can tell that the company, and this is again why I gave the Dark Knot a high thumbs up, because they actually did too. This costs money and it's a small detail like this, which lets me know, okay, they had artisans putting this together, not just, you know, they weren't just trying to squeeze money out of everyone. Now let's talk about tipping. So tipping is again, gonna be in this back area. Ties that oftentimes will say they're 100% silk aren't always telling you the truth because here in the tip, also on the tail and on the blade, they're gonna have, this is in the back end, it's something most of us aren't going to look at, but it's in that tip that if they're using silk there, and you can you can feel it, if they're using silk there, you can rest assured that they, they spent a little bit of extra money to give you something that, yeah, you know, you can argue isn't gonna add to the overall value. No one's gonna go up and look at the tip of your tie. However, you know it's there, and it's a small indicator of quality. Um, now let's get into the shell. So the shell, we normally see it is broken into three parts. Yes, a tie is broken into three parts. You get it as one piece sewn together, but right here in the center, we've got the gusset. And the gusset is what holds, and you should see, yeah, it's about right here, and it's gonna have angles like this on the side, and this is what's called the gusset. Then we've got the tail. This is called the tail end, and then we've got the blade, and this is the, the big end right here. You wanna make sure that your tie is firmly brought together with three parts, and I'll get into why this is important here in a second. The last thing, and why those three parts are important, is a bias cut. So if a tie has a bias cut, that means that they actually took the, uh, so the fabric, that they cut the tie from, they had to cut at a 45 degree angle. Why this matters is actually going to hold the tie together. It's gonna to give it more strength over time. Uh, there's also you know, a length cut, a cross cut. We're talking about the bias cut. So you're gonna have basically extra scraps. A lot of companies will try to cut corners here and they won't go with a bias cut. Uh, and that's why you've got the three part construction. If you didn't have a bias cut and you just cut you know, straight across, then you would be able to possibly put it together with one or two parts, but that's not what you're looking for. And I'm gonna talk about that why in the two part test. Again, we're focused still on construction, but the two part test is one. Let, go ahead and grab the necktie, put it on a table, 
hold it at the tail, at the end, the, I'm sorry, the blade, the end of the blade, and then where you would basically tie the knot. Pull it apart a bit, not too hard. You don't want to tear this thing in half. Uh, although, you, all right, a little bit, and then it should go right back to its original shape. The other thing that you want to look at is hold the tie over your arm and look at it. Does it hang straight? If it is not a bias cut, there's a chance that it could start to curve over. If you see the tie curving over, it doesn't have a good drape and that's not going to be a problem that's going to go away. So avoid those type of neckties. All right, we talked about material, we talked about construction. Guys, let's talk about customer service. So I said I was going to reveal this and I am. Whenever I open up a tie from the dark knot, what I really like, okay, so Rishi can't be here with me. He's over and making sure his company that's you know a cool startup, he, he's making sure, he's focused on that. But what he does is the presentation and within, he gives me instructions and a free gift. So he didn't have to do this, but I really like it. You know, he's got this little guide in here of how to match it with any shirt in my wardrobe. So he's got like this little card and he sent me a free, basically, tie clip. Now, a tie fastener, uh, it's made out of plastic, but the thing is, is if, you know, he, he sent this to me, he didn't, he didn't have to do this. And I like companies that go above and beyond. Okay, I'm gonna try to get, here it goes. All right, so the tie I am wearing right here, the Darien Novelty Squares. Uh, blue, light, silver, he gives me the colors. It's recommended with a solid pink, light gray, or white shirt with a charcoal gray or navy blue pinstripe suit. A solid pink will provide a great contrast. I mean, basically, he gives me a little bit of a style consultation to this specific tie. Uh, if you also go over to their website, they give you a little matcher of how you can match up any shirt with any type of tie that they carry in stock. Little things like that matter. Call up the company. Do they answer the phone? Send them an email. Do they get back to you within about 24 to 48 hours in a working day? Uh, those are the kind of things you want to pay attention to. What is their money back guarantee? Pay attention to their return policy. Those are the small things that to me make a big difference. Don't penalize a company if it hasn't been around 150 years. However, look for the indicators on social media. Go to their Facebook page. Check it out and see, okay, are a lot of people complaining? Those are the type of things that enable you to make a smart purchasing decision. And gentlemen, what do you think of those three tips? And I know some of you guys are probably going to say, Antonio, you're wearing that pinkish uh, shirt with the green jacket. You look like the Joker. Let me know in the comments. And in fact, go over to Rishi's website, go to The Dark Knot, and check out their, their matcher and say, hey, Antonio, did you break the rules with uh, what this actually, what, what they said this tie was going to go with? Darien Novelty Squares. So feel free, go check it out and let me know in the comments and support The Dark Knot, a good company, guys. And I support this with an article. I'm going to link to it down below. I go into a lot more detail, repeat everything I talked about, except in more detail, and go check out that article. Uh, let me know what you think, and guys, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.